So, I'm back. <clears throat> yes, I've gone through... Uh, I stitched... I don't know. I forgot I have to speak. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, I've put on the metal beads. Do you see there? They sort of stick out. That's one. Thought it might be a bit more visual if I hold it on the side. So that's my last round or row of beads. It's the metal beads. And I can't remember because it was before I had my lunch if I've gone through twice. Uh, but I shan't be particularly concerned about that. Now I'm gonna do the ma the black matsuna again but this time I'm gonna do a decrease so I'm gonna every I'm just gonna put put a matsuna in between every other of these metallic beads. I hope you can see I I, I believe they are a bit similar in color but if I show you on this one instead like you have the, the the blue metallic beads here and there is no I'm saying it all wrong there are the blue metallic beads and there is the next Matsuno so it's gonna end up being just four beads in this row and that is the decrease <coughs> But I also want to, you can be not bothered about this, but I, I find that I like if, if, um, if they sit in the same row. So I have that Matsuna there in the same row as the orange beads are, which means I'm doing the decrease where the blue bead is those out ones. So here where I normally would put in a bead I skip. I just sew through the next bead directly as in a normal peyote decrease. And then I put, put in a bead and I skip skip one And I put in a new bead and I, I can go through both next beads at once also if they're positioned like that. And four. It's good to do the counting here. Because this row can also, when you're doing the decrease going inwards, it actually is fairly easy to get lost where you are. So let me see here. No, I've not done four. I've only done three. I need to do one more. <coughs> and that's the next one. there but I want to go through two beads one more time because I'm going to do a step up and there is the step up and now I'm pulling Because I'm doing the decrease with these beads being fairly large, it's not too much of a problem. But sometimes I do decreases with even 15 O beads and um, it is very easy to get lost. So a good trick is to keep counting. Like I'm going to show you, for instance, on this one. 
when I came around and went the other way I can't remember how I did this one if I did one side and then turned over I think I did that then it is very easy these are 15 O beads it's easy to sort of make a mistake either you skip going through two beads when you should or or you go through three beads instead or like when when you've gone through the whole lap because you you can basically not see what you're doing because also depending on how the beads look sort of all merges together you might even come here and then you do another another step up another sort of put on another bead in that lap so it's all confusing uh, and particularly also if it's the same beads in both rows here I've sort of it's a different kind of bead so this is a, a difficult lap it could be lap or row or whatever I should call it but this time it wasn't that difficult so I've done the four four Matsuno beads in black and now it's time for the blue these opaque opaque blue to, uh, with a lot of red in beads if you look here it's maybe easier to see on that one these four blue beads And do you see how nicely that turns out with sort of that blue bead in the same line as that blue bead? I think that is quite nice. Here's also another time when you can sort of be aware of the size of bead. Like for, I'm using the, my, uh, these are check beads and they are not super even in size so they come both thin or thick ones like you compare those two they're a bit different in thickness so when you see how it looks here you could sort of pick oh, do I want to go for the thicker ones or the thinner ones but another thing that happens here is that because you're going inwards it doesn't happen the same way as it does when you do it outwards because this bead will end up sitting here so you, you won't feel like it's sort of peeking out like that. And um, I'll show you how to deal with that. If you wish to, it's something you can think that you shouldn't, that you don't want to bother about or you might want to bother about it or be bothered about it there we are now I've put in those four but like you see they do not they should be sort of more come in closer here but that I believe but I'm not 100% sure I believe that's going to happen in the next row and now I saw that I do not have any of these green beads left so I'm just going to pop over to my bead tray which is over here <coughs> and I might go for another color or maybe I won't I'm going to pick f four green beads of the exact of that kind. I don't want to make any design decisions at this particular moment. Yes, I need to do a step up also. That's also it's kind of easy to get confused here. Because the green beads 
Well, sometimes when I do these, uh, be, uh, I actually finish off on this row. I don't do the, the final row because it became, becomes too tight. Perhaps I shall do that this time too also. Ah, I shan't. We'll, we'll see what happens. Do you see? Because it was just a slight, slight difference in size between the orange and the blue ones. It sort of has a tendency 